Hey, what's up, everybody? Hey, it's Walker and Nick at Full Spectrum Laser, and welcome to Laser Talk Live. That's right, everybody. Walker's going to not move so much so his microphone doesn't make any of that scratchy right, nose try. for you. He was just a little animated there. But welcome. It's Wednesday. It's 4 o'clock. Sorry, it's not Wednesday anymore. It's, it's Tuesdays Tuesday. now. Sorry about that. Old habits die hard. So it's Tuesday. It's 4 o'clock. We're talking lasers. And uh, what are we talking about this week, Walker? So we're talking the right material for your application. Absolutely. So many people, they ask, why don't my photo engravings look good on acrylic? That's because acrylic's not the best. Not the best. You can do it, but not the best. Yeah. Yeah, and then we're going to go over material tests. Absolutely. Material tests are very important for getting the right settings for your laser for the right material. And then we're just going to quickly talk about using scraps materials for making projects and having fun. Absolutely. Everyone has those large sheets of material, whether it's a 12 by 24 or sometimes a big 4 foot by 8 foot sheet, and you always have scraps left over. we got some fun ideas on how to use them. We do. So let's get into it about choosing the right material. We have some great examples, right? Absolutely. So we got some examples together, um, just some different uses of different materials. Now, this is one you could probably only do with paper. Yeah. So this is a pop-up uh, actual card, which I really love. I picked this one for you because you're a fan. Love Game of Thrones, absolutely. I'm actually yeah. a late late to the game. Yeah, Game one of, of those guys fans. that finally sees it and then years later is like, talking oh about it. Oh my god, like, have you seen Game of Thrones? Yeah, like, did you know Ned Stark died? <laughs> yeah, crazy. Yeah. But this one, uh, I think it's uh, interesting why you grabbed paper because you really couldn't do this when, with any other material. No, it's a pop-up book essentially and I love this company. It's called Love Pop. Love Pop. They actually yeah. got started using one of our lasers. Yeah, yeah, and it's just really amazing. I think it's the coolest idea. Absolutely. Love Pop's out of Boston, Mass. They're a great uh, company. Um, I think they get uh, they produce offshore now, but the uh, their cards are incredible. Yeah, they must because when I went to Hong Kong, I I saw all their <laughs> cards. Millions of the cards, yeah, yeah everywhere. Yeah. Uh, so what else we got here? Oh, this is one of your favorite examples. So this one's a great acrylic project because acrylic's cool because you can see through it and it lights up really well, especially when you engrave it. That's really important when you're doing things like this with uh, PCs, right? Yeah, because you want it to be nice and clean. Obviously, wood would hold a lot more like uh, static and just dirt and grime. Mm -hmm. And this, you can see everything, lights up really well. I just think it's a perfect application. And there's some bends in there, too. You need to bend it. You love to bend some acrylic, that's yes. right. Yes, I love a bending uh, acrylic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a really cool, this is a uh, laser cut instrument, right? Yeah, it's called a hurdy gurdy. A hurdy gurdy. Now, besides having the greatest name of all yeah. laser cut projects ever, uh, tell me about this. This is kind of neat. Like, And really, the wood's the important part here, right? The wood is the important part. You couldn't make this out of acrylic because, first off, it's a project that has to be cheap because they sell this as a kit that you put together. And then the wood has to have that acoustic vibrance. Right, some resonance to yeah, it, Yeah, right? some resonance. And acrylic wouldn't do that. And also, there's a wheel on that that, as you crank it, it runs across the strings like the uh, like a violin would. Oh, right. So the horsehair on that violin, it's doing the same exact thing mechanically. And then you press the keys to play it. And it actually has, there's a video on YouTube, if you want to check it out, that you can hear this thing. And it sounds pretty crazy. It's pretty cool. So that's U-Gears, if you want to look that yeah, up that on uh, YouTube. It's like $80 kit. I think it's awesome. Yeah, not bad at all. That's a really cool gift for a uh, for a young aspiring musician to get that. Anybody. Put yeah, that I mean, thing together. Put that in my, uh, in my yeah. basket, and I'll take that. Uh, so what else do mm. we have here? This one's pretty cool. Yeah, this one goes into our Halloween season. Oh, yeah, we're getting pretty mm. excited about Halloween, aren't you? I am, yeah. yeah we're we're just getting started the early. Yeah, we got the uh, 30 days of Halloween making coming up. Yes. So look out for that. We'll have to start on the first of the month because there's 31 days in yeah. October, but, you know, we'll figure that all out. But this one's really cool. This is cut out of leather, right, or faux leather? So this, I believe, is just a simple fabric. Oh, just fabric, excuse yeah, me. Yeah, but... You could do this very easily. Even if you had a muse, you could put these things together, stitch them together, rivet them together, which I like to do. But it's a really cool application. Yeah, this is a, uh, a really cool pro application. I could see making this in just two or three sections on the uh, Pro 48. Yeah, I like it a lot. That's a great project. Um, that's a, another reason why laser is a great little addition. So, I mean, that could have been a sheet, and then she threw it in the yeah. laser. Exactly. Laser cut those things out, and now she has a costume. Very like cool. Costumes are a huge thing with the laser cutter because it's oh, for me at least, it's always last minute. Especially like last year, I helped my brother. He wanted to be like a policeman of his job, so we made him a little badge with the gold. It was really cool. Very very cool. The um, looks like we have some uh, shout outs on Facebook coming in. We got the uh, Dezel's uh, saying hello, John and Jeanette as always. Uh, Thank Jim you Robinson, for thanks for tuning in again. Uh, those kits are very cool. Uh, Robin, thanks for uh, tuning in again, sir. 
Um, Scott Team Lipsy, Mom. who's that guy? Jeez, saying hi to everybody. Oh, yeah. Pretty presumptuous that everyone's saying hi to him. <laughs> I don't know who this guy thinks he is. Just kidding. That's uh, Scott, one of our uh, producers here on the show. You know him on Thursdays when he's in here in the laser yeah. lab with you doing some of those cool projects. So, my buddy. Yeah. Um, so, what else we have here? Now, we have some examples in the studio here we'd like to show you. Um, mm -hmm. Now, one of the ones I love the most is this one right here that you recently made. You want to talk about this? Yeah, let's lower the lights a bit. Oh, yeah, let's uh, let's set the mood maybe. So, you might remember the, uh, the Zoltar uh, thing we made, but. This is just another great use of acrylic. Now, this is a little battery-operated uh, stand um, that you can either plug in USB or put batteries in the bottom, but that's just edge-lit acrylic. And then, like we said, um, Walker did this a couple uh, weeks ago with the Zoltar thing. So we did a Zoltar cut on the same thing. You can see that works uh, really well, especially, especially when it's when in you straight. It straight it. Yeah. When you put it in straight, that helps even more. And then, Walker, you did another one too, right? This globe. Yeah. It's when I show different colors. Yeah, but the edge light uh, works great, and really, and that's really the only material you could do anything like that on, right? Yeah, you wouldn't be able to do that with wood, that's for sure. And then um, <coughs> the other one we have down here, right in the same view, is this um, tile. Now, why don't you talk about the uh, tile a little bit? Yeah, that's a great stone example, <coughs> um, because the contrast from the laser to the actual polished granite. And I just think that's a great photo. That was at 250 DPI, so you don't have to wait forever for it. And it still gives that great look. I mean, that looks like a photo. Absolutely. And that's on a nice, heavy piece of granite. I know you can't tell how heavy it is at home, but that's a full sheet of granite that you would put in, like, in your um, your home or, or uh, anything. And this is... I mean, as far as a gift, people are just yeah. always amazed when you can laser engraved. Uh, what's something you have to consider, though, when you're engraving on black granite like this? So a lot of times you have to think about how the actual material is going to react. So it's going to go from a dark material to a light actual output. So you'd like to, you'd want to inverse your actual image because what is actually being engraved is going to turn white rather than black, which usually happens when you start to burn wood. Absolutely. So um, we can come back up to the, uh, uh, with the, uh, with other parts of the, um, I guess, um, you know, practicality for material for use. Um, you have to kind of consider a few different things, like when you're using the material, right? So like, mm -hmm. uh, what are some things you want to think about, like when you're putting together a project and considering like what materials to use? Because I think a lot of people think that basically if they use the laser, they have, you know, three mil acrylic and birch plywood to use. Yeah, I mean, there's so many different uh, applications you can have, but thinking about the specific material is really important, especially if it's a notch project or something like that. Like, speaking of notch projects, like a wood's going to notch completely different compared to an acrylic project. What's the uh, difference there? So, wood has a little bit of play and give, uh, rather than acrylic doesn't have any give at all. So, when you go to notch, like, let's say you make a nice tight notch, you don't want to use too much glue. With acrylic, if it's too tight, it's going to break your project. But with wood, wood has that little bit of give that it's going to actually help it go inside and then kind of clasp onto it. Absolutely. And then I also noticed, too, when uh, gluing together wood, wood has the most amount of playing out absorption. Like, uh, I noticed everything I glue together uh, with wood seems to hold more. Acrylic has to be a little prepped, right? You have to sand down the acrylic usually? Yeah, usually. Uh, and special glues are probably the best for acrylic. They actually have special acrylic glue, oh. which is just really a solvent that actually melts the acrylic and, and helps bond it. it. Together, yeah. right. And that has a really clean look compared to super glue, which it's clear at first, but then it turns white. So it looks like we have some uh, hellos coming out. Yayo is uh, tuned in again, as well as uh, Lane Yost, who's asking, uh, hey, guys, enjoy the show. Was the granite image done with a 1.5-inch lens? Uh, actually, no. This is actually done on a 2-inch lens at the lowest uh, resolution. So this is, uh, if you want to just show it again real quick, Charles, so Lane can get a good look there. This is 250 DPI on a 2-inch lens on a 45-watt Muse hobby laser. Now, what's important about that is the image was really good. Absolutely. It was a really good sourced image. It wasn't a low quality, let's say like 250 by 250 resolution that we expanded to fit this piece. Absolutely. Uh, the biggest thing with photos too is prepping the photo a bit. Like if you take a photo on your phone, you can engrave it on your, um, your laser right away. But uh, really understanding that you need some good contrast, good lighting, and good uh, lines in the photo is really important too. Uh, so John on Facebook says, we did the 3D head in acrylic, what causes the little fracture? 
Uh, so, John, when you say the little fracturing with the 3D head, um, do you mean uh, along the edge of the cut or in the engraving? Because if you're having a little bit of fracturing in the engraving, you could just have the power a bit too high. Yeah, and if it is on the edge, what you'll notice when you cut on your honeycomb tray is that the laser, as it's cutting through the acrylic, hits that honeycomb mm -hmm. and then kind of just flares up a little bit and you'll see that edge in your acrylic, actually in wood as well, you'll yep. see it, but especially in that acrylic edge where it kind of fractures a bit. It looks like a fracture, but it's actually melting there just a little bit more. Yep. Uh, another hello, uh, Tom Sherwood. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, oh, he's uh, John's talking about in the engraving. The, in the engraving. I would so assume probably power. Yeah, too power. Too yeah. Too much power. Possibly bad, bad acrylic. And uh, another thing to consider too, if you have, um, like the common thought is, if I want it to look better, I'll make the resolution higher. Not necessarily. Not, not always, not in lasers, not the case really at all. Like there's somewhat some truth to that in some cases, but mm -hmm. for the most part, that's not a completely true statement. Uh, yeah. For this factor, um, like for example, uh, the right material, the right application, if I was doing the same engraving on wood, to get the best looking photo, I'd probably go 500 DPI. Yeah. Now, if I was going to make that into a threshold and put it into some acrylic, I would probably go 1,000 DPI to get the, the most thing. But I'd have to be very really low power. Very low power because you're putting so many lines of resolution. The thing is I like about 1,000 DPI with acrylic is you almost melt a little bit away of that uh, white dust. So you have a little bit less of the dusting, a little mm -hmm. bit more of the uh, uh, crew. Yeah, uh, with the uh, actual elephant here, that was such a light power setting, there was almost no dust present. Looks like we had a couple uh, questions. Uh, oh, real quick, Mr. Ruben L. Oh. Vasquez, our good friend from Florida, checking I in. I hope we fixed him. Yeah, I hope you're all good with your Muse. Uh, quick uh, mention to Muse users out there. If you're ever operating and the Muse is a little bit slow, if it's a little boggish, if it's ever just acting a little slow, chances are there is a couple things going on. Uh, your cookies and cache for the website probably just need to be cleared. That will help yes. a lot. But a quick reset on the machine uh, will always do a tune-up. Now, the things you can consider to prevent this from happening is not keeping so many uh, projects on your Muse. Now, one thing that might have happened and something to consider is if you had projects saved in RE2 and then you're switched over to RE3 use, your machine still could be storing those projects. So just be sure to check uh, if you have projects stored. Um, you can always go up using the file, save to uh, project file up in your menu. Save those projects right to your PC so uh, you can reload them right into your Muse. That include the location, uh, layer order, uh, power setting, current setting, all those things. Everything mm -hmm. that you had saved will be saved for the project. You can load it right back in. Um, this will also help with the computing time. So you'll notice when you hit play to start your laser head, there's a moment where the um, software thinks uh, for a moment before it starts sending the laser head out uh, the fewer things it has to kind of fight through in the in the um, software the faster that will be as well <clears throat> yeah I always like to remind people you don't have to keep making new projects absolutely I just always clear my project and then go to the next one absolutely like, I think I have one new project that just is always kind of the new project yeah, yeah. and then out of just habit I just kind of keep everything cleared out of there not for any other reason then I kind of do that with all my other pro like whether it's Illustrator or Premiere or whatever I just try to keep as little so like as little files in the program as possible yes. just so the program works as fast as it can let's say we got another question from Lane saying Walker um, would the image be even clearer on a 1.5 inch lens on the engraving on our uh, granite here now it would be higher resolution when it comes to the dots, but the way it reacts, it, it wouldn't necessarily be better, right? Just because of the way it reacts, but it will look good. Yeah. It'll have a smaller uh, spot size. Now when you say better, will it look better? Um, arbitrarily, I would say most likely. Uh, you would yeah. say it would look better. Now, when you have the 1.5 inch lens, remember that's making your spot size smaller. Mm -hmm. So that is enabling more lines of resolution. Now, to be honest with you, if you run 250 DPI on a 1.5 inch lens, that's when it gets kind of weird. And yeah. honestly, I don't think it would look as good at that resolution. No, it wouldn't fill up as much space. Right, so with a 1.5 inch lens, I would suggest going to 500 DPI and doing the same thing. So Crystal on Facebook asks, would this be a good machine for an entry level crafter? Uh, I'm assuming she's talking about the Muse. Absolutely, Crystal, uh, this is a perfect machine for the entry level. Um, very easy to use, quick setup out of the box. Uh, no internet connection required. You can use Mac, PC, or Linux. Really easy onboard yeah. LCD screen. I mean, if there's if you don't have a design, like a design software of your choice and you're brand new to all of this, 
it's the best. Yeah, I think. I think vector designing is very intimidating to people. Creating vector yes. lines that aren't just uh, bitmap or JPEGs images, like having lines for the uh, the the laser to follow. So our design software, I think, makes it very very easy for people who've never used Illustrator or Inkscape before to get into vector design and uh, really maximize the use of their laser. Because if you're not doing vector design, you're really only using about a third of what the laser can do. Yeah, but I, I would also say as a beginner, a lot of the times you just find some cool image you saw on Google and then you just drag and drop that into your uh, software and then put that on something you already own, right? Like that's how I started. Finding something cool that I just want to engrave on something. Absolutely. I think that's the coolest thing when you're around your house or if you're wandering through Target or Goodwill or any place. You see something that's kind of neat and you're like, that would be really neat if I engrave something on top of it. Um, Yayo, it looks like he's saying, um, and I'll, I'll, <coughs> I'll direct this to you, Walker, because yeah. I feel like you no, deserve this. No, this is totally this. us. Okay, so just to let you know, uh, and this is uh, from Yayo, um, just to let you know, guys, I've been uh, in contact for three weeks and have been learning a lot from S FSTV and tutorials. I will be certified myself on two hobbies uh, that I have. Thanks a lot. Yeah, yo, thank you anytime. for watching, man. Anytime. This is exactly what we do it for. Yeah. Um, uh, sure, a little bit of this is for people that might be considering the company or considering uh, getting a laser, and we're glad to answer any of those questions for people considering the product. But really, we hop on here for you guys who own the product, who have questions, who want to get yes. the most out of your laser. So uh, our pleasure to do it, and we hope you're getting the most out of those two hobby lasers. Uh, really glad that the certifications and the FSTV uh, has helped uh, along the way. That yeah, just it's honestly, totally us. Yeah, it makes, uh, makes us all worth it, <clears> to be honest. Try to throw you. that all at me. No, oh, I mean, this is, look at this, you're the face. This, yeah. Look at this. You're the face. Look at this. <laughs> Don't forget Scott. Oh, yeah, Scott. Oh, Scott. 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 Scott's the face. Scott's, yeah. the, Scott's definitely the face. Beautiful, man. All right. all right, so uh, what we want to talk about real quick, too, is um, we have a really handy tool as you're selecting your material. It's called the material test. Yeah. Now, a lot of people, they want to ask, uh, just give me a, uh, a settings chart. Please just tell me Tell the me exactly settings what for settings to put material. in for my exact material and my exact laser. Just tell me exactly what to put in. Yeah, which that would be awesome if we could do that. Yeah, I, I would like a genie as well <laughs> yeah. uh, to tell me all the answers of the, of the world and universe. But the There's too many variables, absolutely. right? Absolutely. And really, I mean, it could change from this morning to this evening with the amount of humidity in the air, especially mm. here in the monsoon season in Las Vegas. It goes from very dry to weirdly humid in minutes, and then it's just gone. So yeah. your, your wood will literally bow up to a C and then flat down to an L in about 30 minutes. Real it's quick. Really quick, yeah. So uh, with the material test, essentially what you want to do is you want to take this one inch by one inch uh, square, which is available on Laser 101, and you want to drag it into RE2 or 3, uh, or you can uh, send it into uh, RE3D, RE1 for those of you who've been okay. using it for a while. And once you have that into uh, the software, you basically have two options. You have an engraving option and a vector option. So if you want to test out how deep an engraving you're looking for for a dither or solid fill, you can do it there. Or you can test out different uh, uh, power settings uh, for a vector cut using the different colored vector lines. It essentially allows you to do a test for each uh, material. Now, what I have at my house is a little drawer full of these little squares. Mm. And so when I'm done doing a material test, I'll cut it out, and then I'll write on the back, all my settings yeah, yeah. and That's so good. when I go back and I'm like oh I wanted it to look like that again I just go back to my little drawer of my material test which is another great thing you can <coughs> use scraps for it's very true I was gonna say I, I don't do that I should but it's all in here Oh well, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's what I was doing that for a while. Then all that in there was just starting to get too full. I yeah, had too many numbers. It's like, what's that's it? Thirty-three percent and sixty-one. Mm. What is it? That it's, happens. It's too much. Then you but go crazy. A little bit. I mean, when you have that many numbers running around in there, it's it's nuts. It's like mm. uh, what's that? Uh, Jim Carrey in that number it's 23, 30, 23, 23 yeah, whatever. Right. <laughs> Everything's a twenty-three. Um, mm. So anyways, the material test, that's a great way to create a small little um, cachet for you, for examples. Now, I like taking, so if I have a successful cut, so for example, if I took this beautiful um, color hues acrylic uh, from Romark, and I really like the settings, and I really like the way this um, you know, came out, this is just a perfect marking on this acrylic, what I would do is I'd take a material test, and I'd run it off real quick with the same exact settings that I use on this, mm -hmm. and I'll throw it in the drawer, and that way when I go back, I have exactly now what it looked like. Do you write the power numbers on there? Yep, just with a black sharpie. Okay. Um, now, if I wanted to get super fancy, I could just use RE3 and put it on with the text. That's true. I mean, I could just do that, but sharpie's for me. I'm a sharpie kind of yeah. guy. Yeah. Man, I noticed. <laughs> so, but speaking you of noticed. scraps, <laughs> <laughs> you have so many so, sharpies. So what do you do, uh, what else do you do with scraps? So, we like to do things with them, have projects. Really cool things, right? 
So we have right here in front of the little camera oh. the actual pod. It's a pod from our giant Ferris wheel project. And the cool thing about this pod was we were trying to do the centerpiece is like the sun and then the pods on the Ferris wheel were actually planets, right? Absolutely. And then we made one extra on accident because that was for Pluto. But Pluto is no longer... Pluto is no longer a planet, so yeah. we had to kick him out of the Solar Express Ferris wheel. Yeah. So when we did, he we made this little crash site, right? So what did you make all this uh, crash site out of, though? So those are actual negatives of the Ferris wheel itself. So this is all just scraps you used to make it look like, like it this thing had flown out and, and, and crashed out. This yeah, is so really, it was, really cool. It was casted out of the universe. Yeah, so. Rick Weaver, that's a great idea to bookmark the uh, material test page. We're actually, uh, another great thing is you can just download the PDF file. We also include on that test page um, not only a Excel sheet where you can keep track of all your material oh, tests, I like that one. but there's also a um, electronic form you can fill out or one you can print out and have there. So whether it's keeping track on your computer, uh, keeping a little notebook, or having it printed out just for notes there, we give a few different options so you can keep track of your material test as well. So whether it's bookmarked, uh, you save it on top of your, I have one on my desktop on both the computers so I can yeah. always drag it in. Yeah, and a Sharpie, right? Yeah. Always. It's a thing I want to <laughs> so you can either download that sheet and write <laughs> all your power settings down or cut a piece out and, and sharpie it. Yeah. Yeah. That's how we do it. We got a related question from Don in Eureka, California. So Don's yeah. asking, are there special instructions for safely disposing of a 90-watt CO2 laser tube? Now this is what you set us up. This is the question you set That's us up right. for right now. That's just a picture. Now, Scott sent us a great photo of uh, what you can actually do if you, let's say your laser tube's gone out and you need to mm. get a new one. Now, this amazing artist took a laser tube and lined it with LED lights, kind of like this, um, I think we have one right here, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. <coughs> That's great. So you guys have probably seen this before. Um, it's oh. like Christmas. You it's see like Christmas tube Christmas. lights. You see this outside. But they took their, uh, this looks like a 120 or 150 watt laser tube. That thing's huge. And they made a little bracket for it and they hung it up. And now they have a really, really, I mean, I'm we really got to. interested in how they did that. Yeah, we got to make a few of these now. Yeah. Like they obviously had to take off <coughs> the diode, right? So, yeah. And then so it's repurposed though. Right? Yeah, so repurposed. But I could see you just doing that and even just stuffing it with uh, um, Christmas lights. Because it looks like the inner tube there is missing. Yeah, so he probably spanned it and then clamped it down on the ends. Yeah. Yeah. I Still think it's really cool. Really cool but application. But if you just want to break it and dispose of it, follow the protocol. Support will give you all the instructions on how to do so. Absolutely. Now, that's the safest way to dispose of the laser tube. Now, you, you might ask why not just throw it away or keep it. Like, we obviously keep ours. We make art with them there. You see some in the back. But you want to break your tube mostly because it's really dangerous to have in the trash, not only for you but for the trashman. And obviously, there's, there's people unfortunate enough that have to, like, walk through the trash to like yeah, sort it, to move it through. Though. Absolutely. So um, large things like that is very much like a medical type of, yeah, uh, like same sort of a class where you have to like be careful how you dispose of it. And most of the time, I mean, you wrap it up in a towel, hit it with a hammer. Yeah, it's actually, it's really fun to do. And it's not dangerous. It's just compressed, like we're breathing it in all the time, same stuff. Absolutely, so there's CO2 gas yeah. inside. Ni uh, little nitrogen. Looks like we have one more uh, question coming in from John. Uh, what type of tape or masking material do you recommend to avoid smoking? We love big old masking tape, don't we? That's our favorite. Do we, we have do. that roll in here? We. I think it might I be right outside. I think it might be right outside the door, Scott. We'll show you what we use, uh, John. And you can get this on Amazon. I think it's where we ordered this from. So uh, it's essentially, it's if you can't find it, it's a giant sheet of masking tape. Yeah, if you just real look thick. Yeah, um, it might be in uh, one of the drawers. He'll be searching for. One. Yeah, he'll be looking for him. But anyway, it's a big roll of masking tape. Kind of looks like a roll of paper towel. Honestly, yeah, it's it about does. that size. But uh, we ordered that. Maybe it's got to be a year. We've had that roll. A long time. Yeah, it, it lasts forever. It goes a while. Yeah, it might have cost forty bucks on Amazon, something like that, for the roll of tape, which seems ridiculous for a roll of tape, but it's. It literally lasted us over a year here. Um, like, and we probably still have another. Like, it I definitely I lasted us through the, the end time. of the year. Yeah, yeah I, we use it every day. Yeah, I, it wasn't expensive at all, right? No, I think it was like forty bucks for yeah. the whole big roll. And I think we might have got like the medium size. There's a bigger one and maybe one smaller. So, don't quote me on prices or anything. We're I not a, an affiliate or if anything. If you check out, yeah, Uline, they have uh, a lot of. Yeah, them. Uline has the uh, the best line of that. But they have everything from uh, twelve inches down to six four inches wide. Um, but the masking tape is is great but if let's say you don't have that i've used in a pinch before just the um uh, paper tape what you can get at uh home depot 
It's a uh, normal mask game. Yeah, nor- normal mask game's like four inches, three inches wide. I use that at home all the time. You can use painter's tape. That works good. Like the, uh, what's that brand? Uh, the blue frog. Stuff. Yeah, the blue stuff's good. The green stuff's good. Um, that painter's tape, they sell those in thicker rolls. Uh, you just want something that has uh, low tactility on the tape, so you don't want a lot of stickiness to it, uh, so you don't leave a lot of residue on your material. And then two, I think the most important thing when you're putting down masking tape is a very firm application of the tape. So like yes. whether it is like a sh- like a edge like this, I think we use edges of this acrylic all the time mm-hmm. to to um, kind of put it down, kind of like if you're getting uh, bubbles out of uh, vinyl application. Exactly like that. Uh, but instead of getting all the bubbles out, you just want to make sure you have a perfect application of the tape. And we actually did a video on that yeah. exact process. We'll link it up above. Is it above my head? Yeah, above my there head. We'll link it right up here. So there's probably a little thing right here. This little yeah. thing, just click on it. If you want to see cornholes being made. Oh, yeah, that's right. So when you made that really cool personalized cornhole set, which yeah. there's a project for if you want to check out in our uh, projects blog. Um, really cool cornhole set full size Uh, you can actually upsize it um, yeah upsize it to full size or there's a half size so you can fit it in the uh, ps24 basically can fit the size you made yeah and And then then you can upsize it to full size and make it on the ps48 so that's a personalized cornhole which is like a bag toss if you don't know what cornhole is if you're not from the midwest what are you talking about yeah what's cornhole it's really weird it's weird (laughs) name cornhole is that some kind of cereal no it's not cereal i would not eat a cereal name that Probably not. That's probably, <laughs> probably it's in corn, cereal, yeah, Kellogg's. Yeah. No, like anyway. Pops. Pops, yeah. So that's the uh, material that, uh, test in a nutshell. Now, with art projects and in, um, experimenting with your uh, scraps, like I suggest using your scraps to run material test. Yeah. Uh, keep around for testing things. I always have a couple pieces of scraps uh, near the muse just so I can throw it in there real quick and get mm. a quick test on. Um, another thing you can do, too, which I, I think helps a lot is you like to pre-mask your tumblers before you go as a little test. So like whether it's just like lightly marking it where mm-hmm. the thing's going to be. So if you can imagine uh, masking the tumbler and then drawing the outline of it with like the lightest power possible on the tape where you can just kind of mark where that engraving is going to be. It's surprisingly resilient, that tape. So and you can do like a significant power on that and still etch onto the tape. Yeah. Cool. Um, uh, looks like we got to get to the weekly contest winner real quick because we are getting a little low on battery Mr. Jark. With his look, whoa, look at this new. Wow. wow check this out. Congratulations, mm-hmm. Mr. Jark. Now, what he's making with these pieces here is a harmonica. Yeah, so he's, he's 3D printing some parts, right? And then he laser cuts the actual reeds. The actual reeds, and then like, that goes in. Those vibrate at different uh, resonance and harmonicize, and he's got a harmonica. That's crazy. Though. That's pretty cool. So congratulations, Mr. Jark. You'll be able to do some really cool engravings with that. Uh, I think we have a round of applause for him, don't we? Hey! Yay! He's right. actually restoring vintage instruments. Uh, so he's uh, not only making those harmonicas, he's uh, restoring vintage mm-hmm. instruments. How that. cool is that? It's like nothing. I mean, restoration. So easiest cool. way to my heart is take cool old things and bring them back to life if they're instruments or vehicles even closer yeah. to my heart. Yeah. Uh, looks like that's all we have. Again, we have the online survey. Let us know uh, what you think, what we can do better on, what you like about us. Um, as always, visit our social medias. Follow us on the interwebs. Like, subscribe. Get the notifications. Um, we do our other live shows on YouTube, so make sure you head over to our YouTube station. Give us a quick subscribe. Uh, there's probably a link down below uh, right now. If not, uh, Megan, I'm sure you can <coughs> give a quick comment down below to our YouTube uh, channel. Give us a like and subscribe there. We do a lot of uh, live videos on there as well. Most of our um, in the cut live engravings there. We got another question coming in? Uh, just one. Jim Robinson, that's a good that's a good uh, tip. Yeah, Jim's saying, if your engraving has a lot of detail, I found it easier to give it a light sanding than trying to get the masking tape off. Uh, yes. Great tip. Yeah. Uh, I also like to take some really heavy uh, Gorilla tape, and then if there's all this fine detail, just hit it on top of the masking tape as it removes all that. Absolutely. Detail. Almost like a... Uh, uh, pet uh, hair gallery. Yeah, the hair thing. Yeah, but yeah. instead just take really heavy duct tape and do the same thing, just kind of lay it on it. It removes all that tape. Yeah, those detail things. Um, I also like mm-hmm. using just a little a toothbrush. Um, that, or if it's real fine and you want to paint it, then, you know, like a cute, uh, like a, what is it? Like a toothpick. Toothpick. There we go. Yeah, the, you um, talk to me. the other side of the toothbrush is the side I like to use, the uh, like what you normally use for your tongue, the rubber bristles. Yeah, yeah. That, that grabs the stuff off really good. And then the other side's great for cleaning it off. Um, that's a great, uh, great comment, Jim. We appreciate that. Uh, once again, always check out our Laser 101 page. That's laser101.fslaser.com. 
that's got so many assets, got all the material tests, all Walker's free projects, um, different material assets, um, just a great place to get free stuff, free laser. Plus, you'll see this guy's face like, I don't know, a bazillion times. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, he's all over the place. Probably sick of this already. <coughs> More uh, Nick, more Scott. I don't think they're saying that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the Scott thing. I hear, this, your I, mom. I, I, more I, hear Nick. I hear Scott's mom all the time calling him. We want more Scott on. She wants We're, more Walker. Whoa. Do we have a riff? <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll let them figure that out after the show. All right. Well, we appreciate you tuning in once again here on a Tuesday at 4 o'clock for uh, Laser Talk with Walker and I. Uh, if you got anything that you're interested in, anything you'd like to have us uh, go through. Next week, we're doing some really cool things. We're actually going to walk through both Muse and Pro rotary, rotary users. So yes. we're going to do a real in-depth uh, how-to. So if you get Rotary questions, bring them for next week. If you've got another topic you would like us to cover on one of these weeks, just leave it in the comments below. We'll get anything, it Anything. Anything you guys want to see, comment. Let us know. Like if you would really, if there's a lot of interest in lasering foods, yeah, we'll, we'll get some enchiladas in here. We'll do the the whole weirder, thing. the better. Yeah, like uh, really uh, things that you would maybe feel silly to ask. Yeah, this is the place yeah. to do it. Like we'd love to explore all those silly things, get all the questions out of the we box. We experiment all the time. Absolutely, yeah, it's kind of half of what you do is kind of figure out the best way to do things. Yes. Yeah. So, like I said, give us a like, subscribe, all those things, uh, and until Thursday, where we'll see Walker and Scott inside the laser lab with their fancy new coats, doing some cool stuff with mixed medium um, art. Right. Yeah, we'll be learning a lot. Learning a lot this Thursday. Okay, we'll see you then, and until next time, keep making. So good. Hi everyone, like the videos? Subscribe to our channel. Think you like the videos? Keep watching, then subscribe to our channel.